Okay, so we um last time we study read the um uh yeah if for meditation the five the element of five be used this light or desire is not complete renunciation there is no experience for new, newly initiated mind how then can five become a means to achieve perfection So again, if we meditate on the five element, right? But if we still have the thought of design, um, we not let go of um, attachment to the, the five elements. Uh, so there's no way to achieve the uh, perfect enlightenment. Uh, so as much as we still attach to certain type of Elements, right? The fire, the water, right? Yeah. So, yeah, please. Um. If meditation is on the wind, the element of wind, motion and stillness are a false duality from which Supreme Bodhi cannot develop. How can wind serve to achieve perfection? So, yeah, meditating on any distinction, if we're like maintaining the distinction in our mind, we're maintaining the mind state of duality with whatever it is. If we're like distinctly holding the concept of wind, well, before it was given a name, it was still, it still existed beyond the concept of wind. Um, so these are kind of highlighting if we're if we're focusing on a concept born out of duality, then how can we not be limited to duality? Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we have to let go of the notion of motion and stillness, right? Otherwise, if we still attach the motion of stillness with the winds, we get stuck there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if the elements of space be used for meditation, if dimness and dualness cannot be enlightenment. Uh, since whatever is enlightened differ much from body, how can the elements of space have the true profession again, as well as we still attach to the uh, dualness and brightness of the space, right? There's no way for us to achieve anywhere where we have to let go of those uh, attachment of the body goal. Yeah. If on the element of consciousness you meditate, it changes and is not permanent. The mind fixed on it being false. How can that element then help you to achieve perfection? Yeah, so the <clears throat> the mind fixed on consciousness being false makes sense because um, if we're going to be conscious of consciousness, I mean, it's kind of hard to like if if we think that we are fixing our mind on consciousness, well, we're really still like within like consciousness. Because we're experiencing this notion of of ourself fixing our mind on something, um, which is the kind of that the basic equation for consciousness is uh, self experiencing other, um, and uh, so that that mind being false makes total sense. It's more of an imagined, like an imagined mind that's doing that. Um, and yeah, the consciousness is not permanent in the sense that it's always changing. Yeah, I think is really easy to witness when we meditate. That is just a constant flow of of ideas. Hmm. Yeah. Phenomena are all impermanence. Thinking originally come and go, since because whoever differ from a pet. How can the elements of perception achieve perfection? Again, 
we talk about perception of thinking, right? Thinking, uh, our thinking come and go. Uh, if we just focus on the thinking, uh, there's no way for us to calm our mind down. There's no way for us to, um, uh, to recognize our own pure nature. Mm. So, I think um, this one is very important for most people. Right? They just play around with the thought. And even me too. When I was young, mm, uh, I think uh, during the time that I just um, uh, got to college, right? the time that I, um, I started to learn Buddhism, so I tried to think more. And what happened then? The more I think, the more crazy I, I was. <laughs> right? Uh, the more we think, right? The more crazy we, we are, right? Because mm -hmm. it's mm, That's why so many people, they have mm, that type of, mm, what they call, um, uh, lack of sleep at night, what they call, asoma. Insomnia. Asoma, right? So they cannot Insomnia. stop thinking. They cannot stop thinking. Yeah, for me, if yeah, if I don't do meditation, if I don't do any kind of practice, it'd be crazy, right? Many people they have that kind of um, a problem, and they don't know how to stop. Uh, have you encountered this type of patient that they have all kind of thinking, keep moving on their mind, and they there's no way for them to stop that type of um, uh, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, every solution is just another set of problems. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's like, I just, the, that's kind of patient. I just really take the water course way with, listen to them. If I, if I notice the pattern that they're not, they're not looking for a solution. They're, they're looking for reasons why things have to stay exactly the way they are. Um, and then I can just still be with them. In it, I can still, you know, spend the time with them and and look for an opportunity, but they ultimately something has to happen uh, with them. So I try to call. I try to like get the possibility of relaxation for them. I try to get them to see their like that they have an option to relax, like to find a way to relax. Yeah, many of my students too, they have this kind of problem if they don't know how to deal with their mind. They cannot stop their thinking flow, the flow in their own thinking, and they keep them crazy. And especially when they take a test or taking the final, right? And they freak out um, because they don't know how to handle or they stop the thinking. Uh, and most of the time, think in the negative way when they deal with the test, right? Uh, so um, and that's why that's why we're so fortunate that um, we use like Buddhist meditation, uh, pray, chanting, and so forth. So how was your meditation uh, on uh, on that day? Is it feel good? Uh, I was I was a a little sleepy, mm. uh, um, physically a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't maintaining like attention as well. I was getting a lot of kind of like coming to and returning my attention. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that, um, we have a room so you can take a break. That's why, that's why somehow, sometimes if we force ourselves to do meditation, sometimes it gives away some. Uh, so um, whenever I'm, I was tired, whenever I, was, uh, I have a lot thing going on in my mind, yeah. I uh, remind myself that I need to take a break. I need to go to rest uh, before I do meditation. Otherwise, when I have those kind of thinking floating on my mind, or I'm so tired, exhausted, and so forth, I just waste up my time when I sit there. Yeah. So again, you know, so many people, they have this kind of problem. So I don't know. Without meditation, without chanting, I don't know how I can handle that. You know, how can they handle the mind? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Hmm. Of course, uh, for other people, they think, oh, they play sport, right? They play music, right? They, um, they um, draw art. This is one of the form that that's diverse their thinking, right? Right? Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the solution, but still, it's just on the surface. It's just, it, um, it just changes the direction of the thought. It's not the real solution. It's not the, yeah, it, uh, it's not the um, uh, mm, ultimate solution. Uh, because uh, after they play music, after they play um, uh, sport and pen and so forth, if they come back, as much as they come back uh, to deal with their workload, study and so forth, all can pass pop up again. Mm. Yeah. Or even even um you know, some people when they uh they was tired after a day of working. So they got home and turn on television to watch all kind of movies. So they think that's an entertainment, but actually it just diverts their mind, right? To the movie. But when they're done with that movie they will go back to those kind of things they need to do, or those kind of thinking in their mind. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So sometimes you give your patient this type of instruction, right? This type of explanation, how to deal with the mind, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's someone today, where we yeah. talked about uh, beginning meditation, yeah. No, I mean, how to deal with the mind. Right, uh, I, I used to show my student um, the short video clips that um, mentioned that uh, your thinking is not your, the thinking is not our, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's good thinking, bad thinking, like this lie or all kind of thinking, that's not ours. Usually, um, people would attach to, oh, uh, if I think about the flower, oh, this is mine, I'm thinking about the flower. I they identify themselves as I am thinking about the flower, but actually get a thought. Mm -hmm. That's why, or if it's in the one conversation, if they say if they think something that they think that right, but well, people reject the idea, they be be mad, they be angry, right? So that's why that's why, uh, yeah, Buddhist meditation is so beautiful that um we know the thought come and go. We don't need to attach our our thought. Um, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, is it, are you? I, I, I now submit. I now submit to the world honored one that all Buddhas in this world appear to teach the most appropriate method, which consists of using pervasive sound. Okay, so this is what the question was. The question was like, what's the best approach? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, and he's saying that it's sound. Mm. Which to me, you know, not surprising. I didn't start with that method, but periodically I've been, since we've been reading this, I've been trying. And when they talk about like uh, penetrating everywhere, uh, sound really is, I think, a very good example of that. Like awareness and, and sa the awareness of sound is so uh, pervasive, mm. uh, and it's so it's so interesting. You hear something far off, and it sounds it sounds far off. Mm. You hear something up close, and it sounds up close. That. Um, and and I think how it it blends with the same, like the awareness of, of anything else too, the awareness of, of sights or smells or thinking. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what um, uh, Manshuri mentioned here, right? The, um, the most appropriate method for um, beings um, on this earth or in this samsara, uh, is uh, focusing on the sound um, and think uh, we talk about um, 
in the uh, Lutu Sutra, it, it mentioned um, the sounds, uh, uh, the ear. The ear has 1200 um, merit, right? Remember? Mm -hmm. Remember how we calculate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the sound here is uh, we cannot see through the wall, but we can hear through the wall. That's the difference. Uh, so, um, yeah, okay. Yeah. The state of samadhi can be realized by the meanings of hearing. Thus was avaloki state seva, free from suffering. Yeah. So the state of samadhi can be realized by the meaning of hearing. Uh, and I mentioned that um, when I was young, I tried to listen to every word, every sound. It made me crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of the car, the sound of the people talking, the sound of, of screaming door and so forth. I try to listen to them and it make me crazy. But somehow at that moment, somehow I remind myself, okay, why don't you try to listen to your own, your own sound? At, the, at that moment, everything calm down. Have you tried before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you're, like my breathing would be the easiest one. I mean that at first you try to, to pay attention on all kinds of sound, right? That's no sound, mm -hmm. right? The sound of the car driving, the sound of people talking, the sound of the, the swinging door and so forth, right? It's the confusion, right? Because all kinds of different sounds. But when we listen whether our, our, our breath, uh, even our, our sound, somehow in, in our ear we have some kind of, oh no, it's some kind of sound, right? If we listen to that, our mind more calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, um, that's why that's why I say the Julian is like mean appearing. So this uh, Bodhisattva free from suffering. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. Hail to the regarder of sound, who during eons countless as Ganges sand entered as many Buddha lands to win the power and comfort of his independence and bestow fearlessness upon all living beings. O oh, you who have achieved the sound profound, the seer of sound, the sound of the purifier, mm. who unfailingly, who unfailing as the sound of ocean tide saves all beings in the world, make them secure, ensure their liberation and attainment of eternity. Yeah, I think this is no. This is it's like um, not the shoe try. Is that right? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Yes, yeah, in this sense, like uh, appealing to Avalokiteshvara. Yes, mm -hmm. this, yeah, yeah, in this part, in the passage, yeah, in the the part, the, I think chapter twenty four. Hmm. Yeah, you went top of universal law chapter, right? Mm hmm. You have not memorized that up to that yet, right? No, I I, I started to what I'm doing now because I was it was getting so tough to keep reciting and trying to memorize new. I've just started I like taking a break from that and I'm just reciting different chapters. And I'm actually like reciting more because it doesn't feel as much of like a burden to try to like to keep building it up while it's, I have to do it every week or else I forget lines and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. somehow this one, this pastor is similar as um, the pastor that pray uh, this Buddhist up in the chapter 24, Universal Law chapter. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let us see. Reverently, I declare to the Tathagata what Avalokiteshvara said. When one dwell in Kwaitu, rows of drums from the Russians similarly are heard, so hearing is complete and perfect. Uh, um, so row of drums from the Russians can hear. Oh, um, in the... Uh, Divana Sutra, it mentioned one time that um, uh, when the Buddha is um, 
uh, went to a uh, uh, a place um, uh, to stay uh, because um, of the heavy rain and thunderstorm. So he stayed in that um, in that place, and the place that's where they um, uh, they pile the rice. You know, you know, in the past they they plant the rice, right? And and they pile the they pile the rice. Um, so anyway, so uh, uh, after that, after the the heavy rain and thunderstorm, so the Buddha walked out of that house. Uh, so the book, and he saw many people um, gather uh, in front of the house. And uh, the Buddha asked, what's going on? So people say, what happened? Uh, we get got heavy rain and all kind of a thunderstorm uh, around and even... Um, uh, two, actually, yeah, two men and four cows, uh, were struck down by the thunderstorm, the, the thunder. And um, they asked, "Where were you?" Uh, and would I say, "Oh, well, yeah, I, I was here in this house, uh, in this um, in this community house. It's not the not the real house, but community house." So would I, and they say, "Really, uh." Uh, were you sleepy or were you awake? So the would say, yeah, I'm awake. Uh, were you aware of um, heavy rain and thunderstorm? And the Buddha said, yes, I, I did. So, but um, somehow uh, they say that um, how could uh, you stay there without moving? Uh, so the Buddha say, I am a samadhi. I I I heard and I, I I recognize. I heard the the sound of the rain and the thunderstorm. That's all. You know what I mean. So that made them surprised, and they recognize how strong and deep the Buddha samadhi was. That's why they became Buddhists later on. Mm. So to compare with that story. To compare that story with this kind of what you call um, the hearing nature or or the uh, the practice of uh, hearing, so what do you think? Is that an opposite? One is that you when like, like Buddha when he was in samadhi, even he heard the sound, but they would not disturb him anymore, right? But here uh, it mentioned about um, the. Uh, the Bodhisattva uh, used hearing nature uh, to attain enlightenment and to rescue people. Are they comparable? Are they compared to each other or they they the opposite each other? Yeah, it's that it's certainly compatible that um the Buddha's like able to cognize the sound but not be averse to it or attached to it so that it doesn't disturb his mind, but it's merely um, kind of neutral information. Mm -hmm. And and in the practice of meditation and listening, well, we have the same sort of intention to develop or like uncover that mind that's non-reactive so if you know whether we're blamed or praised we don't have to react to it uh, but we can remain at peace either way so using yeah i think it's a good example of how in that case the sound which maybe scare would scare and just dis scare and disturb a lot of people like such a terrible thunderstorm but um to you know enlightened mind it's it's non you know it's just information Mm -hmm. Yeah, they recognize, but uh, they are not moved by those sound, right? Mm -hmm. But like uh, I just mentioned recently, right? when they focus on external sound, I'll be confused. But when they listen to more sound, right, as we focus my mind on I'm on breath, so everything will calm down, and no matter what happened around me, 
RLS, we will not pay attention much, right? Um, that that's what we live with. Um, um, the pure nature, um, or the human nature there. So again, yeah, that's just be really compatible. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, the presence or absence of sound and voice. Oh, eyes. Okay, yeah, but the eyes. The eyes cannot pierce a screen, but neither can mouth or nose. At all times can be heard. The five other organs are not perfect, but hearing really is pervasive. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, right. So yeah, you can you can block vision pretty easily with something like a screen or a wall. Um with uh taste, obviously, you know, if you're just not touching the tongue, that's you know, you can't taste anything, it's really limited. The nose, you know, you I, you couldn't really block smell with a screen because you can smell things through a screen, but you certainly could block them with like a well-sealed door. Um and certainly walls. Um, the body only feels when it's touched. This is something I I disagree with. Oh, really? <laughs> because because like uh, I could feel the temperature of of the like in a sense it's I'm like at all times the body's being touched by something. So I guess I don't necessarily disagree. I would just say that well yeah, but it, there's always something contacting the body like temperature or wind or even just the feeling inside the body there's there's a a sense of of like where things are located there's a a sense of either warmth or coolness um like flow or tightness mm. so, but it it doesn't the body doesn't give us a lot of information about our surroundings whereas sound really integrates us out much more with our surroundings um the the mind's thoughts are confused and unconnected yeah the mind it's like you know trying to build some structure in your mind is like building on a beach like it's gonna wash away you're not it's, it's gonna be you can maintain one for a while and i think you see like you see that example with people where they they do in communities they build these sort of mental structures hmm. that they maintain but they're still you know they are they're, they're they can still take a lot of work to try to maintain and are ultimately impermanent hmm. um, but yeah but sound right sound you can you can hear things from all over hmm. yeah but uh I can. Uh, for us, we know, right? We're not supposed to focus on the external sound, right? Right, because the more we focus on them, the more, mm, the more confusion we have, right? Even we know, yeah, the voice, whether near or far, we can hear, but the, but we need to listen to our, our own voice, or um, to need to listen or be. I mean, to bring the mind back to our own sound. Uh, that's why um they say in um in the Chinese uh, translation, Wan Shu In, uh Wang Te Am Guang does mean contemplation. Shu or uh, Te does mean the word. Uh, am does mean the sound of the words. The does mean the one who contemplate the sound of the word. It doesn't mean that uh this Buddhist right chase after the sound, but she. Uh, she maintain a uh, Buddhist Buddhism uh, maintain the peace and calmness uh, in hearing any kind of sound mm. with the eco mind with the peaceful mind yeah okay all right so um can we stop here today yeah. oh certainly I okay uh, um